thrombosis is a formation of blood clot in a blood vessel containing fruit like your lemon or uh, your sweet lemon uh, even grape oranges these are known to decrease the chances of clot formation hi guys this is mini divan and you watching health site and india.com Today we have with us Dr. Amit Nabhar, Head of Surgical ICU and Head of Accidental Emergency Department, Fortis. Hi, Doctor. How are you? Very good. Very good afternoon. I'm fine. I'm fine. So, as we all know that it's World Thrombosis Day today, and uh, you know the very first question that is in my mind is, what exactly is thrombosis? Thrombosis is a formation of blood clot in a blood vessel. now it may be in an artery or it may be in a vein now what does it do uh, these clots uh, which form in the blood vessels result in slowing or even blocking of the flow of blood uh, they can even break loose and uh, get impacted in other organs and if it does so then it is known as embolus so this is what uh, and this clot itself is known as thrombus and this whole process is known as thrombosis Also, having said that, doctor, if you could enlighten our audiences with the fact that what is the significance of World Thrombosis Day? Uh, see, honestly, it's a, it's a, it's a thrombosis is a really a condition that is uh, overlooked or even misunderstood at many point of time. Uh, it is celebrated on thirteenth uh, of October every year, and since uh, year two thousand fourteen, physician who was a pioneer in working out the pathophysiology of thrombosis, who has done landmark. studies and uh, has set the guidelines for the management of thrombosis now basically the idea is to draw the global attention towards this uh, phenomenon mm. uh, which is really very less understood and what would what would that be it could uh, be to highlight the causes of thrombosis including conditions like atrial fibrillation that lead to triggering of that mm. to talk about the various risk factors leading to thrombosis even uh, the signs and symptoms that a person can uh, pick up and address to the medical professional and, and and visit your uh, uh, the medical practitioner mm. then evidence based treatment and uh, management of uh, this thing and basically the whole idea is to reduce the death and disability of uh, associated with this condition which is really a preventable uh, death or disability mm -hmm. so that is the whole idea and it never kind celebrating 13 october every year as a world thrombosis day so since you mentioned that there's so much to it so let's just touch upon the causes of thrombosis and you know its various symptoms so this is a quite an extensive question basically i just break up this venous thromboembolysis into two types you know two uh, two halves one is the deep vein thrombosis that is basically it's the formation of clot in the veins located deep inside your body This is known as deep vein thrombosis or DVT. This valve, which is commonly known as. Now, once this clot sometimes gets dislodged or becomes an embolus, as I said in my uh, first uh, answer, and gets lodged in the lungs, then it is known as embolization or pulmonary embolization. Okay. The DVT plus P is known as VTE or venous thromboembolism. This is the main topic of today's discussion. Mm. Now, if you talk about the risk factors, the risk factors are different. There are certain very high risk or very strong risk factors, certain moderate risk factors, and certain low risk factors. Mm. Now, what what is the high? Basically, it is a result of prolonged or long term immobilization. Now, which is the commonest place? One is uh, when you are hospitalized, mm. or uh, it may be for your knee surgery, maybe for your uh, limb surgery, or maybe the the GI surgery, colorectal surgeries. They have high incidences when you are not or you are lying immobile in the bed. It can result in the formation of thrombus. Then you have certain cancers. You know, cancers increase are generally tend to be a thrombogenic in nature and increase the risk of formation of clots. Uh, the patients with cancer carries almost four uh, percent uh, chances of uh, thrombus forming. Okay. Okay. Then you have persons who are on a prolonged flight. You know, you have, you have, they are they are frequently traveling. They are. we are sitting for a prolonged duration you have these transatlantic flights which are going from you know direct flights from uh, delhi to uh, to new york all these flights where you need to you are you are immobilized sitting in the uh, sitting in the chair for a prolonged time the calf muscles are not contracting that can this stagnation can result in slowing of the blood in your calf in your legs 
and can result in the formation of hair mm. but from that there are other lifestyle in, uh, you know lifestyle related your uh, risk factors like your obesity your uh, smoking your uh, you know blood pressures maybe pregnancy these are one of the few of the risk factors that are associated with, uh, with uh, you know venous thrombosis are there any physical symptoms as well how can one really identify uh the endeavor that you are doing like you make people aware of this phenomenon this uh, this, this uh, phenomenon itself goes a long way in making people realize this now the signs and symptoms you really depend upon uh, what it is whether it's a dvt or if it's a p now if it is a dvt you would have uh, you would have to look out for three sudden onset pain in the calf or tenderness by tenderness i mean pain on touch okay of your calf or your thigh muscles or you could say redness or uh, you know the redness of the leg or calf muscles mm-hmm. or you can have a swelling of the calf muscles these are usually signs and symptoms of a uh, dvt that is deep vein thrombosis now when the when if it's dislodges from there and it lodges in your lungs then you get symptoms that mimic heart attacks mm-hmm. that that mimic heart attack in this case you may have a chest pain uh, you may have a sudden onset of a shortness of breath uh you may have uh, symptoms of uh, sudden onset cough or even giddiness for that matter so these are the symptoms that might that you might might mimic uh, uh mimic an heart attack and 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 uh, make you confuse the two. but what about its treatment doctor when should one seek medical attention uh if you have all these signs that is sudden onset of pain or uh, pain in your knee or as i said pain uh swelling and uh, tenderness of your uh, calf muscles or sudden onset shortness of breath that's time that sudden or chest pain these are the time that you need to seek medical attention especially more if you are at high risk or you have already had issues of thrombus formation or dvt in the past or you are undergoing uh, or you are on oc pills all these should raise uh, high your you know index of suspicion and you should seek medical attention if you present with these symptoms which are unexplainable other than and then and very obvious causes like pulmonary trauma having said that doctor we are still in the middle of the pandemic so has covid-19 in any way impacted the disease so oh, yeah certainly covid uh, in covid-19 itself uh, causes uh, the increase in, there is increased chances of uh, blood getting thicker and clot formation in due to covid-19 itself usually when these patients are admitted we do a test known as t timer uh which shows evidence uh, which is which is markedly elevated in certain patients of covid-19 mm. making them uh, susceptible or high risk to development of thrombus which can then uh, be a thrombus in your arteries or your veins if it has a thrombus in your arteries like your coronary arteries you are likely to get a heart attack or we are seeing increased incidences of stroke in the post covid sequelae so covid-19 yes has definitely added to you so you would see that uh, these patients post covid are put on your anticoagulants as a prophylaxis for the prevention of uh, formation of clots uh, depending upon the t timer levels that they uh, have during their illness but this risk factor can remain for good uh, 40 to 28 days or even up to 3 months depending upon the t timer levels of the patient Also, is there anything that a person can do from their end to prevent the disease? Um, there are there, there's definitely it's definitely a preventable uh, thing. One is that you have to be aware of the signs and symptoms. Talks like these help in that. Uh, secondly, is uh, lifestyle changes easier said than done? Okay, they can help to prevent it. One is quitting smoking. Smoking is a very poor coagulant state. Then uh, get your blood pressures, your sugars well under control. They are in advantage. The advantage is factors. next um, you know uh, if you're obese you need to lose your weight uh, maybe avoid sitting for a prolonged duration of time you need to have your regular exercises uh, if you're if you're if you're traveling if you're traveling or driving or traveling or for long flight avoid uh, use of you know tight clothing when during travel okay if you are known as having a high risk factors for uh, for uh, dvt then you might even wear this graduated uh, compression stockings that are available in the market which are which help to prevent a dvt uh, in in uh, in these high risk patients 
Mm-hmm. Okay, you can do lots of fluids. You can doing lots of fluids, especially when you are when you are traveling. Okay, if you are on a uh, OC pills uh, for birth control, then you may stop it if, before going in for a surgery. And then there are there are certain there are certain food and uh, this thing uh, food uh, items and fruits and vegetables mainly the citrus uh, containing fruit like your lemon or uh, your sweet lemon uh, even grape oranges these are known to decrease the chances of clot formation even there was a study in way back in 2006 in England said eating six uh, tomatoes before you uh, start on a transatlantic flight helps to prevent uh, clotting. and uh, when you are when you are on these uh, long duration flights you should take choose an uh, you know uh, acyl street so that you get up after every 45 minutes or one hour and take a stroll or do these uh, simple leg strengthening uh, leg stretching exercises in order to keep the blood flowing down your leg and prevent this uh, risk factors i think doctor this has been very very insightful and the audiences will go back home with lots of valuable insights and value addition so thank you for that thank you for joining us today thanks a lot thank you